Today I'm going to show you how to create a realistic t-shirt mock-up in Affinity Designer. Let's get started. Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to create a realistic t-shirt mock-up in Affinity Designer, just like these. We have one design with just a logo, we have another design that's like a full front print for like sublimation. And as usual, I'll make this mock-up file available for you to download. So the first thing you want to do is open up your shirt in Affinity Designer and you want to create a page. I made this one 9 inches wide by 10 inches tall. Placed my image on there and just sized it. I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to come over to the layers menu, click on that layer, and then click the little lock. Now what we're going to do is draw a path around the outside of this shirt. So I'm going to get my pen tool. I'm going to zoom in on the shirt. And if you hold down the space bar, it'll turn into a little hand and you can move your image around. And that'll come in handy while you're trying to draw this path because that way you can just move around to where you need to go. So I've got my pen tool selected and we're just going to draw a path around just right inside the edge of the shirt. And if you need to move a node, if you put it in the wrong place, if you hold down the command key, you'll see it turns into a white arrow. You can just click and move that. And then you can adjust those where you need them to be. You can also adjust the handles if you need to a little bit. You want to make sure this one's clicked on so you can continue the path. And we'll just draw right on the inside of the shirt because you can see it's kind of jagged and there's like a black line that goes around it. We want to get rid of all that. So I'm just going to continue drawing around this and uh, then this will be some good practice to help you get a little better with the pen tool. And I think instead of making you watch me draw this all the way around, I'm just going to kind of speed this part up. All right, so I've made it all the way around my shirt here. Just need to connect those two points together. And we can just look around, make sure we got everything good. And again, we're going to clip off a little bit of this shirt, but it's all right. I mean, you'll never know. It's such a small amount. So that all looks pretty good. So I'm going to zoom back out. Just hit Command-0. Now you'll see we have our outline here. And what I want to do is I want to click that outline. And you can see it has a stroke on it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that stroke off because we don't want that to show. And I'm going to click on that curve. I'm going to make a duplicate copy of it. And you can either go up to Edit and Duplicate. Or you can press the keyboard command, Control-J to duplicate it. You can also, in the layers palette, if you right click on that menu or control click on it, you'll get the contextual menu and you can duplicate it from there. So I'm going to just drag one of those down here below that t-shirt. Double click on that and I'm going to name that artwork layer. Now, if you're going to do just t-shirts with a logo or something like that on there, you can do it like this. But if you're going to set this up for sublimation, then we'll need to set up a second artwork layer that has this collar area knocked out. Because you want this part of the shirt in here to still be white once you insert your image. So what we need to do is create another artwork layer. So I'm just going to click on that layer and press Command J. And I'm just going to rename that full front layer 
I'm just going to drag that below the first one. Okay, but if you don't need this layer, you don't have to create this layer. But I'm just showing you how to do it in case you do need it. So I'm going to click on that layer, and it's going to select the path that we drew. I'm going to blow this up again. So what I want to do is I want to draw another path inside here. I'm going to grab the pen tool. I'm just going to start out here and just draw a path right along the inside of that collar. So that way when we place that image, this part will be knocked out. But when you're doing just a regular t-shirt, a colored shirt, this part is going to be the same color as the shirt. But if you do like sublimation printing, like you do a full front print, you're going to have to print that on a white shirt. So this is still going to be white once you print it. So we're just going to knock this out so it has a more realistic look. So I'm going to connect that back. I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to select this curve and it's going to hold down shift and I'm going to select this full front layer. So now I've got both of those selected. If you'll come up here to the top of the screen, to the right hand side, you'll see these blue and gray buttons. And uh, this one is add. We could add them together. And this one's subtract. This is the one we want to use because that way it'll subtract this curve we just drew. It'll subtract that from the t-shirt curve. So with both of those selected, I'm going to hit subtract. And you can see now that the curve, the shirt is cut out here, then around the inside of the neck and then back down that way. So let me zoom out, Command zero. So I'm just gonna click on a color to fill this full front layer. And I have that selected, so I'm just gonna fill that with a color. So you can see, but let me turn off this T-shirt layer right here. So now you can see that it's gonna be knocked out here and then this will just show the white part of the shirt. Okay, so let me just take that color off and turn my t-shirt layer back on. So now we have this one set up for our, just our regular artwork. We have this one set up for like a full front print for like sublimation. So we have this top curve and then we have the t-shirt here. What I'm gonna do is click on this t-shirt and I'm gonna drag it up into that curve. And when I do, it's gonna mask this t-shirt inside that curve. So that way it'll be transparent around the shirt. So when you click that shirt layer, just drag it up and you'll see the little pink bar there. When you get that, just drop it and it'll insert it inside that curve. Now if we open that layer, you can see it's masked inside that curve. And let me change the color of my, my artboard here and you'll see that it's transparent. Click on transparent background right there. So now you can see there's no background on that shirt. So if I grab that layer and move it over here, you can see there's no background on that shirt. If we grab this shirt layer and move it back out of there like that, then you can see the background of the shirt. If we click it and move it inside the curve, then it masks it inside that curve. All right, let me move that back over here. Okay, I'm just gonna close that. Let's click on this layer and we're gonna do Command J or you can do Edit, Duplicate to duplicate that layer. And we're going to take that layer and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And then with this layer selected, you can either right click on it or you can come up to layer and then come down to rasterize. Or like I said, you can right click or control click on that layer to bring up the contextual menu. Come down to rasterize. And now you'll see instead of it saying curve, it says pixel. So this is a raster layer now instead of a curve. So with this bottom shirt layer selected that we just rasterized, we're going to press Command J again to make a duplicate of that. And we're going to name this one Color Change. And then this one, we'll just name it Color. And this bottom one that we named Color Change, we're going to select that layer and come down to the bottom of the layers palette. And click on this Layer Effects, this FX button. Then we're going to turn on this color overlay. Make sure you click on it because if it's not clicked on, then you won't be able to see the options. So once you put the check mark, make sure you click on it to bring up the options and make sure your blend mode is set to normal and we'll just pick a color. So I'm going to scroll down here and pick a blue color, maybe like a royal blue color. All right. 
after you pick your color just click close and you're gonna see, we can't see the color but let's go ahead and turn this top curve off because we're gonna work with that in just a minute but you you can't see the color right now but what we're gonna do is click this layer and we're gonna drag it inside this color layer and now you can see the shirt color and then anytime you need to change the color of the shirt you can just click the FX button on this layer come over here and click whatever color you want to change it to and then close that window so let's turn this layer back on and it's going to hide this because we haven't fixed this yet turn this layer back on and what we want to do is we want to make a, a layer for this tag. And this is just optional, but I think it looks better to have the tag where you can change the color on it. And that way the tag doesn't end, doesn't end up being the same color as the shirt or uh, too dark or too light. And you can adjust it as well. So let's blow this up. Grab the pen tool again. I'm just going to click around this label. Zoom in a little more. I'm going to get my node tool here so I can just adjust these some. And you can click on those and arrow, arrow them over if you need to. Alright, so I think that looks pretty good. Now we can assign this a color. And, and you probably want to do like a 35, 40, 45% gray. Something like that. And then what we're going to do is double click on that layer in the layers menu and just name that tag and then we're going to click on that layer and drag it down here to the color and we're going to put it above this color change layer and drop that in it's going to hit command zero to zoom back out i want to hide this top layer for just a second again and you'll see we have the tag sitting right there so if we click on the tag layer you can change the color of that all right so let's turn this top layer back on and what we're going to do with that is we're going to open that up with that shirt layer selected. We're going to come down to the bottom of the layers palette to this little adjustments. Click that and go to levels. And it's going to open up this little window. And the only thing we want to do is adjust the black level a little bit. And this shirt already has some pretty good shadows. So I'm probably just going to adjust this one maybe like 20%. Uh, maybe 20, 25. Probably about 20 is going to be good for this shirt. But I have done other shirts where I've had to go up to like 50 or 55% black. So you can like darken up the shadows. But like I said, 20 is going to work for this one. So just set that. And then just click the little red button to close the levels. Now if we come back over to the layers palette under that shirt, you'll see now we have that levels adjustment and we have our shirt. So this levels is only going to apply to the shirt right here. And if you ever need to come back and adjust the levels, you can just double click on it and it'll open that window back up and you can make your adjustment here and then just close it to lock that in. So I'm going to double click here on the shirt layer, the very top part of that layer. I'm going to name that shadow one. And then with that selected, I'm just going to press Command J to make a duplicate of that. And I'm going to name that one Shadow 2. And I'm going to drag that one all the way down here below those two artwork layers we created. But we don't want to drop it here. We want to make sure we move it all the way over so that, that pink bar comes all the way to the left. Because if we drop it here, it's going to go inside of this layer. So we want to make sure we come all the way over here so that pink bar goes all the way across and drop it so it goes underneath there and not inside there. Okay, now what we want to do is both of these shadow layers, we want to change the blend mode to multiply. And you're going to see the shirt's going to get pretty dark. But you'll also see now we can see the color of the shirt and we can see that tag. So what multiply does is um, more or less it hides the white so you can only see the black shadows in the shirt and the reason why we do two layers of shadows is because it gives you a lot more control if you click this top layer and click this opacity slider you can move it to the left to kind of tone that down and if you get it too light you won't be able to see the shadows on top of your artwork and that's what gives it a little more realistic look is us being able to see those shadows on top of your artwork so if it's too dark then you can come down to the shadows two, which is below your artwork and you can tone that one down a little bit too. So you can just kind of play with the opacity of both of these to get the look that you want. And that way you've got a little more control over how your shadows look. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to bring in some artwork. Okay, so I've got my two logos here. And since we're doing a color shirt, probably want to use like a white logo on there. 
So we can just drop that on. I'm gonna turn my snapping back on just so it'll kind of snap to the center of the shirt. And to make this bigger, so if I click here on the corner node, it'll scale it up in proportion, but you'll see that it's just scaling it from the top left out. But if you hold down the command key while you're scaling it, it'll scale from the middle out. Also, if you want to scale it from one of these middle nodes, if you just click it and drag, you'll see that it scales it out of proportion. If you hold down the command key, it scales it out of proportion from the middle. But if you also hold down the shift key, it'll scale it in proportion from the middle. So like I said, from the corner, just hold down command. And from the middle node, hold down shift command, and it'll do it from the middle as well. So if you look over here on the layers palette, you can see that our logos are above the shadow layer. So we're not seeing any shadows on top of the image. So this looks like a white image sitting on top of the shirt. So what we're gonna do is click on that white logo and I'm gonna drag it down to our artwork layer right here. And when we get that little bar below it, drop it in there. And now you can see we have that logo inside that artwork layer. And also if you look back here at the shirt, you can see some texture of the shadow on top of the logo now. And so if we come back to this shadow one layer to the opacity, you can turn those shadows up a little bit or you can turn them down. It just depends on how you want it to look you know, on your, lo on your logo. And if the shadows look too dark on the other parts of the shirt, just come down to that shadow two layer and just lower the opacity some on that layer. And that way you can see your shadows on top of the logo, but the rest of the shirt's not too dark. See, that's what I meant by you have more control over your shadows by having those two different layers. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that white logo off and click on the color. And I'm gonna change the shirt color to white. I'm just going to change this to the color wheel. Just change that to white. All right. And you'll see that the shadows make the shirt look kind of dingy since it's a white shirt. So I'm going to click on my shadows here and I'm going to turn this top one down some because it's pretty high. So that looks a lot better. I'm going to click my color logo, drag that on, drop it on there. And you can see that's above the shadows too. So I'm going to click that and drag that down to my artwork layer. Drop it in. Let me blow this up just a little bit. And we can't really see the shadows very much on there. So I'm going to click on that top shadow layer. Turn that up some. And now we can kind of see some of the shadows across the logo. But now it's darkened up our shirt. So I'm going to go back to shadow 2. Come here to opacity and just turn that down. And probably just turn it all the way to 0 for this shirt. So that looks pretty good. And another thing you can do, since this is going to be on a white shirt, if you click on that logo since there's white in the logo we can change the mode of that logo to multiply and it'll get rid of the white that's inside there i want to zoom back out and with that color logo selected i'm just going to scale that up a little bit and there we have that one and if you need to do a mock-up for a black shirt what i would suggest is downloading a picture of a black shirt and just setting it up on a page and putting your logo or whatever on there because if we change the color of the shirt to black it's just going to totally wipe out all of our shadow layers because our shadow layers use black so they're not going to show up on a black shirt so if i just click on effects and go to black you'll see that it completely wipes out all of our shadows now one thing you can do is you could make this a shade of gray like a dark shade of gray it's not going to be you know solid black but you can make it a dark shade of gray to represent like a black shirt and um, that way you could give your customer an idea of what it's going to look like on a dark or you know almost black shirt but if it needs to, if you need a mock-up for a black shirt i would just suggest downloading a black shirt and setting it up as a mock-up okay i'm just going to back out of that it's going to go back to my white shirt here and i'm going to go ahead and turn off this artwork layer i'm just going to uncheck that check mark now we're going to work with this full front layer so let me grab an image right quick okay so i've grabbed this image of a lion and i'm just going to blow that up and i'm just going to scale this in proportion i'm going to hold down command to scale it from the middle just drag that over here just so it kind of covers my shirt if you press command minus it'll zoom out a little bit so what i want to do is just i want to put this up there to cover the shirt and i'm going to hold shift command and click on this middle node and drag it to make it bigger and now what i want to do is remember we made that full front layer so i'm going to grab that lion image i'm going to drag it down here to that full front layer and drop that in and when i do you can see that it knocks out this neck part 
and I can tell that my layer moved a little bit. So I'm just going to grab that layer, line that back up. There we go. And see what I was saying about knocking this part out because when you print it on a white shirt, the inside of the shirt here is going to be white anyway. You're not going to print that. And if you don't knock that out, it's just going to look kind of weird that that's going to be, you know, the same color blue as the front of the shirt. And then if you need to adjust the shadows, you can click on the shadow two and it's already at zero. But we probably want to lighten this up a little bit. So click on that shadow and it's at 100% right now. So we can just lower that down maybe to... Uh, maybe like 75, yeah, 70 looks good. Just so we have like a little bit of the texture of the shirt in there and not too dark up here in the white. And if you want to change the color of your tag, just come down here to your tag in the layers, click on that, choose a different shade of gray, click that, and there you have it. Okay, and one last thing, when you're doing these mock-ups, if you want to export these with a transparent background, you can do that. You can just go to File, Export, just choose a PNG. So when you export it, it'll have a transparent background. Um, and if you need to have a background, you can just bring in an image. We'll just drag that to the very bottom of the layers. So it'll be behind the shirt. We'll just put it there, just stretch it out to fit. All right, so then you can put a background on there, whatever kind of background you want on there. And if you're gonna use a background, I would just suggest maybe putting a drop shadow on the shirt so that way it doesn't look so flat. So in order to do that, what you wanna do is click on your color layer here, click on effects. We're gonna to go to outer shadow, click on that to bring up the options. And then we can just turn these to create like a little drop shadow. You can increase the opacity here if you need to. And when you're done, get it the way you want it, just click OK. It just gives it a little bit of depth instead of looking so flat. Okay, so I guess that's about all I have for today. Like I said before, I'll go ahead and upload this mock-up file to my Facebook group page. If you want to go there, you can download it for free. But anyway, I guess that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure you click the little bell icon and turn on notifications so you'll know when new videos are available. And if you want to follow me on social media, all the links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.